Nearly 1 million people in Canada are at the risk of transport poverty, which accounts for 5% of the total population and 40% of the population in low income. So what is transport poverty? Transport poverty is the outcome of the direct and indirect interaction of transport disadvantage and social disadvantage. Studies have found that it intensifies uh, transport-related social exclusion or TRC, a condition when lack of affordable and accessible transportation options poses obstacles in accessing essential services and thereby lowers the ability to participate fully in social, political, economic, and other activities. This dynamic is demonstrated by this diagram. As we can see, uh, an overlapping of transport disadvantage like no car, poor public transit, fear of crime, high fares, uh, and social disadvantage like low income can lead to transport poverty, which in turn leads to inaccessibility and social exclusion. Such exclusion can further intensify transport and social disadvantage. Now let's illustrate this with a hypothetical example and talk about Sarah and John. Let's say Sarah and John are both 12-year-old individuals. Sarah's household has low income. They don't own a personal vehicle and live in an area with poor public transit. John's household, on the other hand, has high income and a personal vehicle. Also, they live in an area with good public transit facility. Let's assume that Sarah and John uh, both have similar personal traits like motivation, hard work, etc. Now let's take a moment to think about the potential life outcomes of Sarah and John 15 years later. Conceptual and empirical research suggests that transport and social disadvantages are closely related to income, race, gender, car ownership, disability status, immigrant status, um, excessive commuting, missed trips and unmade needs, social capital, etc. As we will think about Sarah's example, we will see how different transport and social disadvantages can potentially produce and continue to reproduce further disadvantages and social exclusion over the long term and across multiple generations. Transportation disadvantage, for example, is more pronounced in areas with fewer spatial resources in terms of jobs, housing, education, etc. Um, therefore, not having a car and living in an area with poor public transit accessibility, like Sarah's family, can lead to extreme commuting for individuals. Evidence suggests that uh, low-income uh, immigrants and non-white population are more likely to be extreme commuters as well as to have more missed trips and unmade needs. The studies also show that quality of school is one of the most important criteria for households with children. Uh, however, low-income households are often compelled to only live in the relatively affordable neighborhoods and send their children to public schools. Thus, their pool of choice might be relatively smaller than the high-income households. At the same time, young people from low-income families like Sarah are less likely to attend universities compared with their peers from higher-income families, like John. And attending university does not only provide an individual with higher degrees, but can also offer considerable social capital. Social capital, or the lack thereof, has multiplier effect on cultural and economic capital, and thus can reproduce social advantages or disadvantages. This also means that any change in social capital has the capacity to effectively alter the actual and or perceived social status of an individual and the social advantages or disadvantages they possess. Research also suggests that observable characteristics, for example, educational status, occupation, and social and political networks are correlated across generations. They can impact economic outcomes and can be directly influenced by transportation affordability and accessibility. Educational and economic outcomes can also be affected by unobservable characteristics like personal traits, motivation, and skills, etc. But if the observable characteristics are causally linked to transport poverty, then irrespective of personal attributes, 
people living in transport poverty will continue to experience its spillover effects. So over the course of their lifetime, Sarah might potentially encounter challenges because of living in transport poverty that John is less likely to encounter. On this backdrop, uh, my research aims at examining the longitudinal impacts of transport poverty and transport-related social exclusion in Canada. Studies on longitudinal impact of transport poverty and social exclusion are limited. And according to my best knowledge, this is a completely untapped area of research in Canadian context. Uh, as part of my preliminary research plan, I want to develop a detailed conceptual framework of longitudinal and or intergenerational transport poverty and GRLC. We have seen a hypothetical example, but what I want to do is to develop a detailed conceptual framework. And uh, I also want to examine whether and to what extent that conceptual framework fits the Canadian context and thereby explore how the dynamic nature of transport poverty impacts individuals over the course of their lifetime. Uh, as part of the detailed conceptual framework, I am thinking of using um, the modified framework of transport poverty, where geographical disadvantage was considered separately. I'm also thinking of incorporating in the framework psychological stress arising from transport poverty and GRLC. Uh, to examine whether and to what extent that conceptual framework fits the Canadian context, I plan to uh, use a mixed method approach. As part of the quantitative element, I will use census database, longitudinal administrative data bank, vehicle registration database, and neighborhood level built environment data generated from open source database like OpenStreetMap and GPFX. As part of the qualitative element, I plan to conduct interviews and focus group discussions. So how can uh, my research contribute to the existing knowledge base? First, through the use of longitudinal panel data, it will give us a better understanding of potential causal linkages uh, that cross-sectional research cannot do. Secondly, uh, it will help us understand better the dynamic nature of transport poverty and GRC in Canada. And finally, it will provide planners and policymakers with insights to help shape more equitable transportation policies and plans. Um, these are some of the references that I used for this presentation. And thank you all for listening. I'm studying my second year of PhD and really excited to see how this research unfolds. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me with any query or suggestion about the study. Thank you.